All right, we are just about to kick off an awesome nine day trip through St. Raphael signature site. We are up here in the boreal forest, uh, just west of Wabakimi Provincial Park. This is true wilderness. This is gonna be an awesome adventure. Dad and I are out here to paddle 200 something kilometers of just awesome lake and river terrain. This is caribou country. There's gonna be awesome fishing opportunities along the way too. And it's a pretty wild and remote route. So we're super excited to go paddle this area. I was looking at uh, woodland caribou, Wabakimi, and I don't know, this uh, parcel of land just kind of popped out on the map. Vast uh, interconnected waterway here. Only a few portages to deal with. We're looking at an average of just one a day. Um, and most of them are under 400 meters in length. A couple might be a little boggy, but that's uh, boreal portaging for what it's worth. So we're really excited to kick off this adventure. And uh, yeah, it should be a great time paddling through uh, St. Raphael signature site. What do you think about paddling way up here in the boreal? Uh, to be quite honest, other than uh, say Moosonee, this is the furthest north I've ever paddled in Ontario. Certainly the furthest north I've ever driven. And hopefully we'll get out there and have the whole place to ourselves because it is pretty remote. Okay, it looks like we're approaching our first portage of the trip. Uh, apparently this is a snowmobile trail in the winter, so we're hoping it's kind of wide enough. Uh, we'll just have to see if uh, there's been any blowdowns uh, making it a little harder. I actually don't see it yet because of the haze, but you know, Brad's got better eyes than I do, and he says he sees it, so hopefully he's right. Can't miss it, dude. There's a sign and everything. Hey, apparently there's a sign and everything. You know, I'm wearing my sunglasses. What can I say? I uh, Actually, I see it now. I see the red marker. So, looks like the trail's up ahead here. I now see the red marker. So, it looks like we're heading right for our first portage. But well, it looks good from here. Looks well-maintained, well-traveled. I bet you it's uh, how the lodge owners get in all their supplies to the big lodge on this lake behind here. So, hopefully, it's straightforward. Okay, so you can see it is marked here. So this is a portage trail. Uh, looks pretty wide, so this part looks easy, but uh, Brad just wanted to have a look and he said, uh, it looks a little boggy and we might sink. That does not sound uh, very interesting. It's a bog. A bog? <laughs> it's, it's definitely just boggy. And? We're gonna get wet. <laughs> wet and muddy. All right. Okay, it's definitely spongy. So far, I'm not sinking too deep. There's a few bugs, but they're not biting, they're just buzzing around. That was brutal. Boggy, rocky, buggy shit. So. Man, oh man, we found the bugs. There's been no bugs this trip, and all of a sudden, bam, you get attacked, because of course you're portaging through a swamp. But holy shnikes, man. What a brutal trail. So I'm gonna go back to find my dad and help him out with some of the gear. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to do this trail again at the end of our trip, but should be lighter weight pack. I mean, we brought some luxury items like beer for tonight, big steak. You know, all the yummy things that make this portaging worthwhile. Yeah. Hey, you found the bugs, eh? <coughs> well, they found me. Oh, crap. I had to stop and get my head net out. My arms are just dripping with blood. I think when I stopped to get the camera out, that's when I 
attacked me. <coughs> Excuse me, I think I ate a few for dinner. Whew. Well, it's day two here in St. Raphael. We woke about 7.30 and it was already really, really hot. Uh, fortunately, there's a bit of a breeze blowing, so it actually kind of cools things down. Also keeps the bugs away. However, uh, today we have a lot of lake travel. Hopefully that wind will benefit us, mostly being a tailwind. But, uh, you know, wind can always change. So the, the good news is there's no portages today. It's all lake travel. So the weather looks fine for a day on the water. What was it? It was a walleye. I wish I had the net. Dang, man. Oh well, you caught one. Half the fun's reeling it in. You got it. One walleye down, I guess so. You know they're here. It's a nice big beach in the distance, so we need a beeline for it. Nice place to stop and uh, have a nice little lunch. Thunder's kind of faded away a bit though. I think this is going to pass by pretty quickly if anything. Yeah. You just hang out here for a few minutes. 
I just don't want to be across a bay and go boom. It's not bad here. So it's raining, but uh, we got the North Water spray deck here and uh, just zipped it on up here. Keeps uh, our legs dry, keeps the interior of the boat dry too. All our packs and stuff, so we don't have water sloshing around there. We're just hold up here for a second because uh, we heard some thunder with this storm and we got the dart in some of these bays, so with the rain coming now and the thunder, it's probably not the best idea to uh, paddle out there just for risk. So we're just gonna hunker down here for a few minutes and wait it out, see if it uh, dissipates and then uh, make a go for it. But yeah, spray deck's great, nice dry, everything is uh, gonna be secure if it does open up over top of our heads. Temperamental weather. Sounds like it's gonna clear. Five minutes, I think we're gonna get going and then all of a sudden, the skies open up again with rain and starts to thunderclap again. It's sitting right above us, it's really weird. Ridiculous. It just looked like a really brief storm. And I guess not. And it sounds like a freight train overhead. It's really bizarre. There's blue sky there, blue sky over there. There's this dark band literally right across over top of us. It's really bizarre. It's so weird. Well, it doesn't look like any bad weather above us. It's a bit of rain. Okay, Brad, what's on the menu tonight? Well, we are rehydrating some shepherd's pie. So I've got all the mix that I did up at home, which is coming along nicely now. I've just been letting sit for the last 20 minutes after boiling. So probably another 10 minutes of sitting. It's got a lot in there to rehydrate. But you can see all the water's coming out. And then, obviously for the toppings, we've got the potatoes to go on top of that. So once the potatoes go on, put the potatoes on top of the shepherd's pie, put it back on the stove, heat it up. Usually what I like to do is put it on the reflector oven to toast the top, but I didn't bring the reflector oven just for the weight on this trip. Um, but it makes a nice, like, uh, almost homemade, crispy oven shepherd's pie. But this is a quicker way of doing it, and it tastes amazing. Cause it's all the same stuff you do at home. Just dehydrated the shepherd's pie mix without the potato topping. And, uh, yeah, backcountry gourmet out here. It's awesome. Put spice to it. I think if you had, like, a bit of a Frank's Red Hot sort of thing. Day three, another gorgeous sunny day here in St. Raphael, and it looks like really good weather. A bit of wind, but that's to be expected on these big open lakes. Uh, looks like it's mostly lake and river travel. Um, doesn't look like there's any portages, but you never know. It does, however, indicate several sets of rapids, maybe up to seven. 
So until we get there on the, on the Minas River there, we're not really sure what to encounter. Uh, hopefully there are uh, enough water we can run them, otherwise we may have to line them or portage around them. Then it's down to uh, St. Raphael River and eventually into Churchill Lake where we hope to set up camp for the night. Another windy day on this lake, eh? We are well north above their native range, although you do get a few straggler species up here. But this is a pretty cool old white pine. You wouldn't expect to find it up here in St. Raphael Signature Site. This one looks really old, really windswept, it's got a lot of moss up top. It looks like it's been topped by a storm at some point in time. Ancient white pine. But then down this island too, there is another white pine growing. So it's got a lot of cones on the top. It looks like it's reproducing. Pretty cool find on this island out here. Okay, we come to our first set of rapids. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. We're just gonna scram down the rocks here. Check it out. So how's it looking here? Simple class two, stick center left all the way down, really easy. Doesn't look hard at all, it's about 50 meters long, it'd be super fun, might get a little wet, but easy, easy rapid. If you dump, no consequence either, there's a big pool at the bottom there. Okay, our first set of rapids, looks like fun, we're gonna do it. Easy class two, we're gonna stay left. There's your cross draw, your draw, that's pretty much all you'll need to know for this. Do you see a massive boulder in front of us? I don't think this will be too bad. How are you feeling? Good. Okay. I'm with you, I feel great. Okay, well like I said, Dad, if we flip here, look at the end, is right there. Yeah. This be dead simple. I'm just gonna ease into here. We're not gonna really paddle. I'm gonna line it a bit slightly here just so we hit that curve on the left. Okay, now we're down. Go. Pretty straightforward. Don't pull me, pull me to the right. Yep. Cross, draw, cross, draw, cross, draw. Right through here. Draw, draw. You. All right. Nicely done. Way to go, Dad. be nice and easy. All good? Yeah, buddy. Right, we're on the Manis River running some pretty sweet set of rapids here, some class twos and whatnot. Um, pretty straightforward, we've avoided all the portages thus far. We've got at least one more downstream set of rapids to go. I've marked on the map as about 100 meters and then after that we got to go upstream on the St. Raphael River. 
but uh, just ran an awesome little class two there a bit of a fun little wave train and now we're just chilling on this beach gonna have some lunch and uh, relax for a few minutes before we're looping back around into St. Raphael River and uh, Churchill Lake all right last rapid on the Minnis River what do you think about that all right all those rapids on the Minnis uh... <laughs> They were fun, we only had to line one of them. One of them was really super exciting, I'll tell you, we got a little wet. But this last one, piece of cake, nothing to it. Just pick our way down. Yeah. Just watch out for rocks. I see a rock actually do center, so. And then just off to the left. But see how there's that wave that's curling there? Yeah, we don't want to hit that. I'm going to bring it aside, we don't paddle that way. Okay. Okay. Hold it. Yeah. Draw in, draw in. Forward. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Now we go forward. Nice. Okay. That's good. That's just, just relax a bit. Just relax a bit. There you go. Nice. Woohoo! That's a rock, yep. Nice. Way to go. Pretty easy. All right, we're on the St. Raphael River and uh, we just saw a woodland caribou go down the shoreline there. We're a little too far away you just see him in the distance he actually swam across the bay and then stood up in the bush back there you just see the antlers big snout on it definitely a caribou not a moose really cool though so hopefully we get a little closer to the next one but there are caribou out here pretty cool so we got pike in yellow we got walleye just a little hacked on that one oops in the uh, white there. Uh, we are making uh, fresh cut pike and walleye. I think the batter process is going a little funky today, but it'll all be good no matter what. In the pan there, but the pan needs to be turned up a bit, but yeah, this is gonna be good. So I got some pike and walleye. Should be absolutely delicious. Man, if you want fish, you're gonna get fish here. It's pretty much every other cast was a fish, so guaranteed, awesome. Add some extra oil, extra batter, made a bit of deep fried broccoli. Well, crispy broccoli. Scalloped potatoes as well. Got quite the feast going on here tonight. Extra creamy scalloped potatoes. Oh yeah, we got a feast. Ooh. Oh, that's great fish. Mm. Mm. Oh, the broccoli's actually good. That was a great idea. Mm. Mm. Tastes like oriental. Yeah. yeah, it's like tempura. Mm -hmm. It's good. That's amazing. Day four here and another gorgeous sunny day. It looks like it's going to be a hot one. Uh, maybe not as exciting as yesterday running all those rapids, but uh, nonetheless, a uh, great place to be paddling. We have uh, Churchill Lake in front of us, a pretty big lake that we have to traverse. Hopefully the winds are in our favor. Then we uh, swing south. There's a portage that will take us down into St. Raphael Lake. see what uh, today brings. I mean yesterday we saw a caribou, a bunch of bald eagles, sandhill cranes, we saw bear tracks, wolf tracks, 
lots of wildlife up here and the fishing is just incredible. <laughs> if we want to fish for dinner, we put the line in the water, five minutes we've got fish for dinner. It just happened last night. Got to the campsite around seven o'clock, said, hey, I'm gonna go put my line in the water, see what we get. Five minutes later, walleye and a pike. Perfect for dinner. So we'll see about today. We'll see how far we want to go. It's kind of up in the air with one portage. It's a lot of lake travel, so uh, depending if those headwinds are going to hammer us or not, we'll see how much ground we can cover. Yeah, should be a great day out here in St. Raphael. Big, big Churchill Lake. What a day for a paddle. Oh yeah, locking out with the weather. I just love how wild this is out here. Absolutely nothing. Well, that's some headwind out there. We just spent about an hour and a half crossing Churchill Lake, the big open part, and it was constant headwinds, uh, half meter swells. Uh, with the two of us, we managed to push our way through. I'd hate to be out there doing that solo. That would be a real struggle. The big open part is behind us. We still have a lot more of this lake, however, but hopefully we can kind of deke in behind some of the islands and take shelter where we have to. Uh, the weather, the sky is getting a little darker. It looks like some rain might be rolling in. So while we're resting here, we're going to get out the rain jackets just in case. Fish right up there, maybe? Yeah. Shelter. Okay, looks like a bit of rain is coming down on us. Not a lot, but we're gonna we're just pulling this little bay here to get out of the wind. Put the fishing rod away, got our rain jackets on. I'm watching these clouds moving in for a little while. Preemptively we got our rain jackets and gear out about, oh, I don't know, 3k back. Now we're getting hammered by the wind, we're getting hammered by the rain here, trying to make our way down Churchill Lake. Unfortunately, it's a headwind. The rain is just driving right into our faces right now. Thankfully, we got this spray deck here to keep the rain out of the hall, off our legs, keep us a little dry and warm as we make our way down this lake. But it is just hammering right now. Might be hard to see on this video, but we're hitting it dead on. Waves are picking up a bit. There's some white caps. Not too crazy, but just enough, man. We're gonna push through this. Hopefully the storm doesn't get any worse than this. It blows over as quick as it blew in. Rainy day in the boreal, man. Nasty. south shortly as we uh, approach the uh, south uh, eastern southwestern arm rather of 
Churchill Lake here and hopefully the winds will be a little more in our favor. Hopefully we're a little more sheltered when this larger wall of water slams into us. We're all warm and dry and secure right now. So right now it looks like uh, we're right under the rain clouds pouring down on us. not crazy heavy, but we're getting soaked. But kind of weird, like off in the distance, I see a big band of blue and the winds are coming this way. So hopefully we will paddle out of this and paddle into some sunshine shortly. Looks like we're out of the rain and there's some blue. Hey Brad, let's just turn the boat around. Show the blue sky behind us there. There's a, there's a band of blue sky back there and we're heading that way. So that is good news and hopefully the rain, that's it. It's gone behind us now. Come after the storm. Woo hoo. Beauty day. Finally. Let's hope she continues this way. We're just getting ready for hopefully the only portage of the day. Uh, we found some blazes on the trees here, and there's actually, it looks like, some very old pieces of wood laid down back in the woods here. A bit of a rudimentary boardwalk, so that should help. So. We're pretty confident this is the portage trail we need. It will save us from lining the boat upstream against this small set of rapids, which the portage we think is about 400 meters, but going by way of the river, it's probably at least double or triple that. So we're gonna opt for this rough portage. Hopefully it's pretty good. So there's definitely a portage here, uh, an existing portage. And the half of it is kind of clear, the other half there's a lot of blowdown, a lot of trees have fallen. Uh, obviously at one point it was a very viable portage because there's some uh, planks laid down in the swampy area, so someone used to use it quite a bit. Basically though we've taken our packs over and we've got to go back for the canoe, but we've brought our saws. We're going to clear some of the stuff away just to make it easier for us and for anyone else who happens to come this way. Just so I can get the canoe around. Yep. Those logs need a chainsaw. Much easier. Now you can see where you're going. Cool. All right. All good? Yeah. See you got everything there? So even though we're paddling through this gorgeous wilderness area, uh, we came across a picnic table here. Must be uh, set up by one of the lodges for their fishing shore lunch. So we're gonna take advantage of it and make our lunch here.
Here we are on day five. It's another nice sunny morning. Of course, you know that weather can change. I mean, yesterday we got caught in that rainstorm out in the out in the middle of the lake. Uh, there was also a lot of thunderstorms developing yesterday, not right where we were, thank goodness, but we could see them way off to the south. For a while there, we weren't sure if they were gonna meet up with us, but the winds kept pushing them away from us. So we ended up camping here on uh, St. Raphael Lake. This is called Torby's Narrows, really gorgeous spot here looking south. And we were able to sit here and watch the storms on the horizon uh, heading away from us, thankfully. But today we're going to be uh, heading south on this part of our big loop and um, a couple big bodies of water. Uh, Hooker Lake is quite a big one. Hopefully because we're heading south we won't have those headwinds like we've had in the past. Uh, it looks like there's one portage today um, getting down into uh, Vincent Lake. Uh, we don't know what condition that will be in but uh, by any indication from the previous portages Hopefully there will be some trail there. It seems that um, a lot of the fishing lodges up here use these to get back and forth to fish in various lakes. So they send, tend to be there in some form or another. They obviously need a bit of maintenance, but we're able to, to get through. So that's a plan for today. Maybe put about 24, 25 kilometers behind us and make it down to Peg Lake for the night. Just cruising the shore on Ghost Lake, looking for a portage that will take us into Vixen Lake. Uh, the portages aren't really well marked up here. So you just have to have a good eye, look for some signs of a path, maybe a boat cache, something like that. So we're just paddling the shoreline here, having a look-see. Makes sense, it was like right there. Stop there anyways and check it out. Okay, so we, we pulled in here. Uh, Brad just hiked down a bit and he found it just like 20 meters down the shore there. So I'll just move the boat down and uh, there we go. Doesn't look too bad. Looks pretty good? Yeah. Good. Still double Gary just in case of blowdown. Okay. Doesn't look too bad. It's definitely a trail though, huh? Definitely a trail. Okay. You heard him, let's go. Okay, so the trail was there. Actually, it's pretty easy to follow the trail, but uh, mm -hmm. like a lot of the uh, portages up here, there's a lot of uh, down trees in the way. So we're getting our saws out. We're gonna trim the trail a little bit here. Okay, well, you know what I'll do? I'll go to the end, yeah. and I'll meet you in the middle. Okay. It's not a bad port out of there. A little boggy. And a little bushy, but not bad, eh? Yeah, the trail's pretty well defined. Just some of this growth from a couple of years of lack of use. Not bad. So we 
are now on Vincent Lake. And uh, there's a bit of a smoky haze kind of around here. Last night some big thunderstorms rolled through, so we knew there was a potential for some forest fires. Not the first time we spilled smoke on this trip, so we weren't too concerned, but uh, two water bombers and a spotter plane, they just buzzed us overhead as we were doing the portage from Ghost to Vincent. So we'll see what comes of that. Not really sure. Yeah, we'll keep an eye out for any forest fires. Um, those water bombers and the spotter plane flew away, so either they're done and the fire's under control, or they're going to refuel. But uh, we're going to push on down to Hooker Lake right now. There's no sense in just waiting around and seeing what the smoke's going to do. We really have no idea where the fire is anyways, so we're going to paddle onwards and uh, hopefully away from the fires. Yeah. Another great day in St. Raphael Signature Site. Uh, we put a lot of kilometers behind us today. We pushed it and went nearly 35 kilometers. We're now camped on Pig Lake. Brad went out, caught a couple walleye, so he's cooking up some walleye tacos. Can't wait. chunk of walleye and we fried up some onions because you know extra batter some fresh cabbage and squeeze of lime here you go Trump. We will, but it won't taste that good. No. Day six, and it's a cloudy day, but it poured last night. At least it's not raining now. Got to bed uh, just about 10 o'clock, and it started raining, and it pretty much rained the whole night. Which, you know, it's a good thing that it's raining at night and uh, potentially put out some of the forest fires that we've seen smoldering in the distance around here. So that's a good thing. Hopefully, though, it holds off today uh, as we continue to uh, head south before 
curving along and heading east along Lawson Lake, which is a very long, narrow lake. It looks more like a river. And um, hopefully, because we're heading that direction, we'll have the western wind behind us pushing us, but no guarantees. Yes, another warm one. Looks like the clouds are dissipating. Got some blue up there, that's good to see. Oh, that breeze is nice. Kind of stop and do some fishing but there's these awesome set of cliffs here really impressive and we've just been looking for good spots where there might be pictographs and uh, yeah sure enough as we're coming in just the corner of my eye spotted what looks like a pictograph of a canoe and a couple other lines it's really hard to make out the moss is starting to really cover it but old and faded very very cool just barely can make that out there's like 10 people in that canoe eh? yeah that's so cool it's a pretty powerful spot here very powerful indeed. I think so. Yep, that's a pike. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Alright though. Pike, not bad. Put that guy back, let him grow a little more. And he is gone. Another lunch stop and another lucky find, a picnic table in the wilderness. But by the looks of things here, this one hasn't seen much use in a very long time. And here's the fire pit. And by the looks of things growing out of it, it hasn't had much use either.
Day seven and another sunny day. We have a long stretch of Lawson Lake still to paddle. It's a very long, narrow lake. We have about another eight or nine kilometers. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it seems the winds change direction. Instead of a tailwind, it looks like we'll be battling another headwind today. Oh well, uh, at the end of this lake, uh, we get to a series of three or four portages that takes us into the next lake. We have no idea what shape they're gonna be in. Uh, good news is the food barrel is a lot lighter now than when we started out, so that should make things a little bit easier. So today we are leaving Lawson Lake behind and we're going to hit a series of three to four portages. Uh, it's the most portages we've done in a single day on this trip, so it, it's not a lot. Um, but definitely for the St. Raphael area, it is a lot. Um, anyways, there at one point in time was a 1.2 to 1.8 kilometer long portage, but in talking with one of the lodge owners, apparently it was super, super boggy. Parks actually cut uh, three new portages uh, to bypass that portage, kind of pond hopping to little lakes. So we'll see if those newer portages, I think which were cut in the early 2000s, are still there, or if they've been subject to a lot of this blowdown. Uh, if not, we're going to try that uh, bog portage. But either way, we got to get out of Lawson, we got to go north, and uh, we'll see what those trails are like really really not sure but we have the saws handy and uh, yeah we bank some extra time to tackle these portages today so we'll see how it goes seagulls are just waiting for us to leave <laughs> all right down the lawson lake we go i still can't get over the fact that it looks like a giant river in like the amazon basin or something like that Found the first portage, it wasn't too hard, it's in this little bay. It's only about 50 meters and it's actually a nice, wide, uh, well-cleared portage. I, uh, there was no marking here, so I, I set these trees up, these little <laughs> stumps, just to let anyone know in the future where the portage is. But uh, yeah, this is a really simple one. Let's hope the rest of them today are as easy. Using the shoreline looking for a portage that apparently the parks people cut through here but a while ago like maybe 15 years or so so it's really hard because all the shoreline looks the same and things uh, get overgrown over the years so we're just slowly making our way down the shore to see if we can find the shorter portage uh, we think there's a longer one at the end that goes through a bog. It's really hard to tell. It all looks pretty green and overgrown. Oh, it looks like a bit of a landing. So we found some flagging tape up on the shore here after going around the bay. We're thinking this may be the long boggy portage, but we haven't found another one, so we're going to get out and investigate this. Okay, this is clearly it. Uh, lots of flagging tape here. Uh, we had to cut a big log so we can get the canoe in here. Walked up just a bit. It's very boggy. There's an old forest fire area. I'm not sure how clear the trail is going to be. Uh, I'm probably not going to have the camera out filming any of this because it's just going to be too much work with the bugs trying to get through this. So we'll uh, check in on the other side, okay?
Okay, well, I just had to shoot a bit of video. Uh, this is definitely a trail that goes through, and it's, it's very narrow, though, but it's uh, well marked. There's lots of flagging tape along here, so it's pretty easy to find your way, but it's very narrow and in places kind of wet and swampy, so it's a good thing to have a good pair of hiking boots, and as you can see, I uh, got the bug net uh, suit on because there's a few bugs in here, but not nearly as many as I thought, so, you know, Brad's got longer legs. He's ahead of me. I'm just taking my time. It's hard with the big pack because if you shift your weight to the side, oh, it tends to roll on you, especially on the uneven ground. So I'm just taking my time and we've, uh, in the, the one hand that's good is it's only one portage. It's one long trail as opposed to three smaller trails. That's okay with me because once it's done, it's done. The ground is definitely soft in spots, but see we have these, got these markers throughout the, the trail so you're not going to get lost, which is a good thing. Just take my time, slow and steady, wins the race. Oh, so. So that's what happens. That's how you have the weight shifts. I uh, lost my footing, the weight shifted, and like a turtle, I'm on my back. So I turn the camera off, put it down, and get back on my feet. Check out all the deer flies, man. <laughs> uh, we're on the 1450 uh, portage to get back into. Dislep, Dislep Lake? I don't know. I'm going to butcher the name of that one again. A anyways, this one starts off pretty boggy. It's pretty long. We couldn't find the first of the three portages that the parks had been cut, uh, I don't know, maybe one to two decades ago. Uh, we may have missed it. That shoreline was completely boggy back on that small unnamed lake, so we couldn't actually see where the landing was. We may have canoed past it unknowingly. Uh, if they don't get used, a lot of these portages get pretty bush bushy pretty fast. Anyways, um, I'm going to boogie because, man, these bugs are freaking horrendous right now. Uh, we did a bit of work on the trail, just brushed it a little so we get the canoe dune down. We're doing it in uh, three loads, um, actually just two loads, but we're staging it, going about 600 meters, dropping the canoe off, going 600 meters, dropping the canoe off, clearing some of the deadfall in our way. But thankfully, it's pretty, thankfully it's pretty good. Um, about 400 more meters till we get down to uh, Marshy Little Creek. Hopefully away from this uh, bug infested hell. It's a gorgeous forest though and this is a really nice trail so, so far so good. Let's get out of here man. Tree. Oh man, where's the breeze? We need one. There we go. Answering my prayers. You know, going back after you've cleared some of these face slappers out of the way, isn't that bad. We've got time because it's the only portage of the day. So we can afford to clear the trails just a little bit. Make it easier not only for us, but for anyone else who comes through. And to be honest, the length is the only factor of difficulty. Actually, there's a couple small hills and it gets pretty boggy and marshy in the middle there. Um, but to be honest, it's not a bad trail. We've definitely been on worse. A little harder with the decked boat. You can tie it up a bunch of different ways, but I just rope it in at the top. It's kind of the easiest way of doing it. You don't have to fiddle with any strings or straps. Just a quick tie and she's golden. It's just my uh, tow rope line there anyways.
All right, we did it. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. A little buggy. A little swampy. But the trail's not bad. Woo! Let's go find some water and go for a swim. Oh man, I'm ready for a swim. <laughs> okay, that's it. 1.45 kilometers for that portage. Uh, I'm not gonna say it was easy because it wasn't. It was a lot of up and down. You had to really watch your footing. Uh, we sort of did it in third you know, we'd go a third, stop, go back, get some other gear, go a third. So it took us a while. We also cleared some uh, some downfall to make the path a little easier. But we've done it now. So basically we did the one long portage instead of the three shorter ones, uh, which might have been hard to find anyway. So it probably would have taken us about the same time. But now we're done. We're going to head out to this lake, find ourselves a campsite for the night. And uh, I'm going to put my bug shirt back on because they're still bad. Alright, we have made it to camp. It's actually getting quite windy out there and a lot of smoke from distant forest fires is blown in here. So, she had a hard time finding a camp tonight uh, coming down the lake. First stop, uh, first site we stopped at didn't look too appealing at all. Um, thankfully, paddling by, we saw this gorgeous jack pine point here uh, sweeping out into the lake. Um, thinking, great, we catch a breeze, get rid of the bugs, but uh, right now, we could see the smoke coming down the lake and as the smoke was coming down the lake, the winds were whipping up with it too. So we're glad we're not out on the water right now. Uh, there's white caps out there. It's really blowing really hard. Hopefully it'll uh, clear up by tomorrow. Good day, we logged about 30, 33 kilometers uh, and that includes some of that portage as well. So yeah, it was a good day out there and uh, we're gonna get some stew on the go and uh, hopefully enjoy this smoky evening when with the wind dying down. But uh, yeah, great day out here as always. Day eight. And it looks like another fine day here. The weather forecast is for low winds, which is a good thing for the paddling because we got about 22 kilometers to do today. Uh, we had a gorgeous campsite here on Des Lesseps uh, Lake last night on a nice high point. Um, but today the goal is to get back to Minchin Lake, which is um, near where our access point is. We kind of staked it out ahead of time coming in there's a spot there that puts us close by, so the next morning we don't have as long a paddle. We do have a couple of portages today, but they're ones that we did on the way in, so we know exactly what to expect. Gorgeous day on the water today. Super calm. Just a light breeze. It's a bit of a headwind, but it's just so light that it's actually really nice, uh, keeping us cool in this hot July sun. Unreal. Unreal.
Yeah, baby. Look at that. That is a big pike. You caught more fish? Easy catching fish. 10 minutes we'll eat fish for dinner. You get fish for dinner in 10 minutes, guaranteed. It's amazing up here. We've only had one day where it was really slow, but uh, every other every day that we wanted to get fish for dinner, we got fish for dinner. It's day nine and we have a very short paddle ahead of us today. Um, we've left our car at the access point, which is about an hour and a half paddle from here, because after that we have a very long drive ahead of us. But it's been an amazing journey here at the St. Raphael signature site. And other than the odd um, person from the fishing lodge that we've seen, we have not seen another paddler in the entire time we've been here. But we have seen a lot of wildlife, a lot of moose, uh, caribou, bear, beaver, and several bald eagles. This is really an amazing place to go canoeing. Paddling out under the uh, smoky haze for one last day, eh? It's good weather. I know. Well, gotta say, fantastic adventure. You know, it's kind of nice that we have a gorgeous morning to leave on too. It's not like we're fighting headwinds or wind and rain on that last day. And this smoke is kind of like that eerie sort of misty, still calm feeling to it. 